Hello, historians. We're keeping our voices down because we're in a museum and we don't want to disrupt anyone. Wow, look at this. Here, we see some items that were used by people hundreds of years ago. Here's a ceramic bowl for cooking. And here's an ax used for hunting. And whoa, what is this? A real human skull? Wow. If you're into history, that's pretty cool, right? But what if I told you that these artifacts and human remains belong to, and actually were, your ancestors? And that they were discovered by a foreign government as they were building a dam on what used to be your ancestors' land. And rather than being offered back to your living relatives, they were instead put on display in a museum. A museum that you just paid 10 bucks to get into. Wow, that, that changes the conversation, doesn't it? But at the same time, these items help people connect with a different culture. Without this museum, would people have the opportunity to observe these items? As you know, when the U.S. expanded, it displaced many indigenous people. These people left items behind. Many of these items, and even human remains, eventually ended up in museums. Nowadays, indigenous tribes and advocacy groups are demanding the return of these items. But some museums and collectors don't agree on how they should be returned, or that they should be returned at all. That's what we'll be investigating today in our case study. Museums, the Repatriation of Native American Artifacts. Our guiding questions are, what arguments are used to support museums' claims to Native American artifacts? What arguments are used to support the return of artifacts to Native American tribes? They'll help you answer our lesson essential question. Who has the right to control artifacts from Native American civilizations? Let's go, historians! To get started, look at your PDF. On the line, indicate which of the following statements you agree with more. Native American artifacts should be returned from museums to the individual tribes. Or, Native American artifacts should remain in public museums. We'll revisit this question to see if anything changes for you. But before we get to our two arguments, let's get some background information to help us understand the topic of repatriation more fully. During the colonization and expansion of the United States, some settlers removed sacred objects and cultural artifacts from indigenous lands. Later, U.S. government officials discovered other artifacts as they were undertaking building projects on former native lands. For example, let's visit the Tennessee River Valley. Starting in the 1930s, the federal government-owned Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA, built dams along the river. While they were clearing the land for the dams, the TVA excavated the remains of nearly 5,000 members of the Shawnee, Cherokee, and Muscogee tribes. The TVA sent these remains to be studied at museums and universities in the southern United States. This is just one example. There were many, many more examples of the removal of indigenous artifacts and ancestral remains. Today, some argue that these items should be repatriated. The term repatriation is used to refer to the process of returning ancestral remains and cultural artifacts to Native American tribes and communities, but not all agree with repatriation. So let's explore both sides of the argument. Let's first examine arguments for museums to keep indigenous items. The first argument is that the items have scientific and educational value when they are in museums. Museums contend that displaying these items to a wide audience promotes learning and contributes to the understanding of history. 
The second argument is that keeping artifacts in museums preserves access to indigenous culture. Some museums argue that they have a responsibility to protect cultural heritage for the benefit of humanity. They assert that by holding these items in their collections, they can ensure their long-term preservation, research, and educational value for future generations. Third, some argue that including artifacts in public collections allows for a more complete view of the world's cultural heritage. If indigenous artifacts are returned, museum goers would have an incomplete narrative of history and culture. The fourth argument is that holding these items allows for cross-cultural understanding and respect. Observing these artifacts allows a non-indigenous viewer to learn about and appreciate indigenous culture and history. Finally. Repatriation sets a precedent for the widespread return of artifacts. Some say that similar demands could be made by other cultural groups around the world. To put it all together, let's go back to our museum. Why are you here today? You appreciate learning about history and culture, and this is a place where you can observe the items that enrich your understanding. Here, you have access to another culture. You're able to see how this group fits into history and relates to other cultures. As a result, you feel a greater understanding of this group and see this as an opportunity to connect with its present day members. While you're at the museum, you see exhibitions from other civilizations, perhaps ancient Egypt or Greece. If items were returned to indigenous groups, would the Egyptian or Greek governments also demand back the artifacts of their ancestors? At that point, could this museum ever have anything more than exhibitions about local or regional history? Hmm, some things to think about, historians. Now let's get to our first guiding question. What arguments are used to support museums' claims to Native American artifacts? In your PDF, also add, to what extent do you agree or disagree with them? Now, let's see why some indigenous communities and advocacy groups have demanded the repatriation of items and remains. First, proponents argue that repatriation would allow for more authentic preservation and research. Remember, museums seek to promote the educational value of these items as well as their preservation, but repatriation advocates say that the indigenous people themselves are in a better position to care for and interpret these items in a culturally sensitive manner. For example, if a museum displayed an item used in an indigenous religious ritual, it may fail to fully explain its significance or the display might not show the proper reverence for the sacred ritual. Tribes could still collaborate with museums on their own, this collaborative effort could lead to exhibitions featuring a more comprehensive understanding of the artifact's historical and cultural context. Second, these items hold cultural and spiritual significance to indigenous communities. Some tribes believe they are essential in maintaining a connection to their ancestors and heritage. Returning these artifacts and remains allows tribes to reclaim and preserve their cultural identity. Third, Returning the items would promote respect for the deceased. Human remains are considered sacred by many indigenous communities. By repatriating these remains, tribes can provide a proper burial. Finally, some say that repatriation is a matter of justice and human rights. Many tribes believe that the removal of the artifacts and remains violated their rights. Returning these items is seen by many tribes as a necessary step towards rectifying what they view as historical injustices. Now let's tie it all together. If universal repatriation occurred, you may not be able to observe so many Native American artifacts in one place. However, you could still visit a variety of exhibits sponsored by local Native American tribes to see how the tribe itself wishes to tell its history. You would be able to make a connection with the people from this indigenous nation, and they could express to you what these artifacts personally mean to them. You would know that this tribe has control of how their culture is preserved, and where their ancestors are buried, and that they feel confident that their rights are being respected. Well, historians, now you have another perspective to consider. Let's review. 
What arguments are used to support the return of artifacts to Native American tribes? In your PDF, add, to what extent do you agree or disagree with them? Welcome back to the museum! So, historians, what do you think? Who has the right to own artifacts from Native American civilizations? You'll tackle this question after we head to the PDF exhibit and find out more about the process of repatriation. Oh yeah, but first, let's head to the cafeteria for some lunch, and then, of course, the museum gift shop. See you after that, as we keep making history.